Hi, I'm Dan, and in this video we're going to look at a way of getting uh, events to be created in one script and then uh, to be listened to in a different script. Uh, so if you've done event-driven programming in uh, something like some GUI programming, uh, you might be used to the idea that you can get one piece of code to generate an event and then have other pieces of code that are listening for that event. And uh, so in that sense, the, the generating code is broadcasting an event and the uh, the other pieces of code are tuning in and listening for the events, and when that event is triggered, they'll uh, act in certain ways. It's not quite the same in Unreal. I've called this video Broadcast Events because that's the effect that we're after. Uh, and I'm going to show you how you can do this within Unreal, um, or at least get the same effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, so, no, first I'll tell you about the setup. I've got a third person uh, template up. I've got a blueprint that I've created, uh, which has a sofa, which is on fire. Um, I've got four instances of this blueprint here on the map that you can see. And uh, within this, I've got some uh, event driven stuff going on, such that when the uh, when the player character runs into one of these benches or runs into the collision boxes of one of these benches, it moves. And I'm using an enum to tell it which direction to move in, and that's been specific, uh, specified within the instances of the players. Uh, I'll just show you that behavior. Um, so each of the these benches are, say, uh, colliding box, um, and they are self-aware as to which direction they are meant to be moving when they uh, when they do move. And there's also a um, a timed thing going on, so that every ten seconds they reset themselves back. And this is the outs the, the the final outcome from one of the previous videos. So I'm going to take this uh, situation that we're in, and I'm going to uh, stick some event broadcasting stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to go and edit the third person character, which is this thing that we're controlling. Uh, you can get the, the viewpoint coming up, which is quite nice. So this is inside the uh, the template stuff that we've got. Uh, just trying to remember exactly where it is. Blueprints and third person character, and this is um, a class that has overridden the player character class that's inheriting from it. And you'll see inside here there's uh, a lot of input stuff, which is how we do the control. So what I'm going to do is, down on the left-hand side here, I'm going to create an event dispatcher. Now, this is uh, the thing inside the third-person character, which is going to say, I've got an event, I'm broadcasting it, effectively. And I'm going to call it uh, my... Um, my bench overlap. Why not? It's not a great name, but never mind. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to uh, make it so that this event dispatcher is triggered when the player character uh, overlaps with one of the benches. So on. Actor. Ah, come on, actors. I just can't remember. Event actor begin overlap. That's one of the things in Unreal. If trying to find the node that you're after can be difficult. You just type related words until it comes up. Um, so when we have the overlap, actually what I'm going to do first is I'm going to check that it is one of the benches. So we're going to take the other actor and I'm going to cast to uh, the my BP, which is the name for my, my uh, blueprint for the benches. And if the cast succeeds, then I'm going to I'm going to call my bench over that. 
I was going to call that event dispatcher that's going to make that event fire off. So that's hopefully everything I need to do in there. Um, so I'm going to go back to my content and uh, my blueprint here and inside here. So the first thing I need to do is I need to tell the system that I want my uh, blueprint to be listing out for that event from the player character. So on event begin play, we've already got a thing where it sets uh, this variable start location to the existing location. I'm going to chain off the end of that. Um, I'm going to get player character. And you've seen this process before. I'm going to cast to uh, third person player character so that it has access to the specific stuff that's within the third person player character class. And then inside that, I'm going to get the, my, what did I call it? My bench overlap. So what I want to do is I'm going to, actually it's called binding an event to my bench overlap. Um, and up here, I've got the script, which, um, Currently, when there is an overlap with the bench, it knows which direction to move and it does the move. So I'm going to take that, uh, disconnect that overlap there, and I'm going to create a custom event in here. Uh, custom event, and I'm going to type in move me is the name for that custom event. So when that custom event happens, it will trigger. Uh, this move. So actually what we're going to do is, uh, it seems a little bit odd, uh, but when that um, event has been called from the third person character, uh, the way we're going to make this work is we're going to, this is actually uh, an event dispatcher. And this dispatcher can have several different events that are in other classes registered to it. So when this triggers, it will call all those events as if it was calling a local event inside the um, inside that blueprint. Yeah. Uh, so um, that's what we're doing with this thing down here, which is binding an event to my bench overlap, and we're going to bind this event here to that. And we do that by taking out this red tag at the top. Um, so this is called the delegate for the event. Basically, it's a reference to that event. And so we can plug that into there. So now what should happen is that when the overlap happens, it's not the bench anymore that's detecting that. You see the uh, on actor overlap is going nowhere now inside the bench. It's the third person character that's detecting it. And when it detects it, it will fire off that event dispatcher which is the one called my bench overlap, and that has got all of the bench move me events uh, bound to it, so it will trigger all four of those, one for each of the the bench that we've got. That's the theory, and we should just check if this is, this is working. Uh, so, play eleven. So, what should happen is when I move into the Bounding box of one of these benches, all the benches should move. And that is correct. What's happened there is it's still got the reset code. So it will reset itself. There we go. And that behavior's there. And everything in there is uh, written into the script. So it should be the case that if we add yet another bench, into the mix, and that's a little bit inconvenient just there. On this one, uh, we're going to set its direction to south, so it moves backwards. And play once again, we're going to, oh, wrong button. And that one should move as well. There we go. All benches are moving at the same time. So that's how you can get one thing to happen to broadcast instructions to several other uh, scripts. You could have, it doesn't have to all be the same uh, 
type of uh, blueprint. You can have many different blueprints that are subscribing by binding their incoming events into this um, into this event dispatcher that's in the third-person character. And that's it from me for now.